Lord God, I uh, never want to open Your Word, Lord, that I don't feel like I have sought to be anointed by Your presence. And Lord, if I spoke on my own behalf, I'd mess this totally up. And Lord, I just pray right now that You might speak to me and hide me behind the cross, Lord. And Lord, I just ask You to help me I hold back my emotion and just uh, to try my best to say this as You had it, would have it said. And Father God, I just pray that if there's somebody out there tonight struggling through something they don't understand, that they might understand the message in which you seek to bring. And Father, I would uh, like to begin tonight by apologizing for all the little things I've fretted in life that looking back didn't amount to anything. Mm -hmm. And Father, I just uh, I ask you to glorify yourself through me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to start tonight by reading the passage of Scripture that's going to be mighty familiar to everybody. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23 has always been a favorite of mine. It's been a favorite of a lot of people, and I think a lot of times when I've read Psalm 23 in my life, I thought that David wrote it on a mountaintop in his life, and boy, was I bad and wrong. You know, it just seems like a feel good thing when it starts out. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall never want it. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and it just gives you goosebump feelings that God's going to make everything all right. But then there in the middle, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Not that I walk around it or not that I can see it from a real high point looking down on it, but I'm right here, right square in the middle of the valley of the shadow of death, David says. And you know, there's just so many times that God does not explain Himself. And there's so many times that as Christians we have to walk through some really, really terrible things in which we don't understand. And yesterday, about uh, oh, about dinner time, I was rolling hay and praying what the Lord might want me to talk about. And it's a song on Caleb. They sang a song on Caleb, which is written by the passage, a script written based on the passage of scripture in which I'm about to read to you. And this guy kind of gave a little testimony, and I decided that's exactly what I wanted to say. And. Uh, well, I'll explain a little more as I go along, but I want to read you Isaiah 43, 2. It says, God says to His people, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they'll not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. And the flames will not set you ablaze. And uh, boy, I really like that passage of Scripture. Because it ain't about going around. God is not a God that going around is His idea very many of the time. You know? And I began to think about all the things in the Bible where God uh, went through instead of around. And Moses is my most favorite character in the Bible. I always said if I had a son, I'd name him Moses if my wife would let me. Now she said that would have never happened if we had a son, but that would have been my vote. But I just love Moses. You know, when Moses... He walks up to the Red Sea and he acts like he's got it all together. You know, everybody's panicking. And they say, why did you bring us out here? Weren't there enough graves in Egypt that you had to bring us out here to die? And Moses says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. These, these Egyptians you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will deliver you. And then in the very next couple verses, Moses just absolutely schoolgirls out and says, God, what have you done? You know, we are here and we got Pharaoh's army behind us and a sea in front and they ain't nowhere to go. And God says, Son, what's in your hand? And he says, A staff. And he says, Well, hold it out and go on. You know, and everybody knows that part of the story. And I've always loved that story. But the part that I haven't put a whole lot of thought to is they walked straight downhill and straight back uphill because that's what the bottom of the Red Sea looks like. And there's a wall of water on each side that's two or three hundred foot tall. And the Bible says that a strong east wind blowed all night and they're headed east. 
So the second half of the trip was entirely uphill, walking against the wind with a 300 foot wall, tall wall, tall wall of water mm -hmm. on each side. Now if you've ever been around wind and water, there's mist of water hitting you in the face and it's just absolutely miserable conditions and you know that I'm in the middle of the Red Sea. You know what I mean? I mean, we, we, we think it's amazing that they walked on dry ground, but they know I'm in the middle of the Red Sea. If he lets go of this thing, I'm done. Mm. And you know, sometimes in life, I think that's what God wants us to see is the water on the other side of His hand. That if I move my hand, there's no way you can take it. But I got it. Mm -hmm. So don't worry. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God could have took them around the furnace, but He took them through the furnace. He delivered them in the furnace, not outside the furnace. You know, Daniel and the lions, Daniel. You have to understand, the flames inside the furnace, God didn't lower the heat. He just turned up the guy, you know. And the lions then, the lion had the same amount of teeth as any other lion. He just held his mouth shut. Because that's our God. When I said, God, I... I get it. That's what I want to preach. And then I thought about Job. You see, Job lost everything he had and every child he had in one day. And 20 years later, God spoke to him out of the storm. 20 years. 20 years is a long time crying out to God. God gave him everything back. But there's one thing Job died without. God never told him why. Not one single time. You read the story of Job from end to end, and never one time does God explain Himself. Because God does not ask us to explain Him or understand Him, just to trust Him. He says, I got this. Mm -hmm. If you're in the fire, I'll take you through. <laughs> if you're in the water, I'll bring you to the other side. But you got to hold on. You can't let go. And you know, there's a lot of people out there that just don't understand why. Last night I was thanking God. All the times I had whined and cried about little bitty junk, it don't matter, you know. Mm -hmm. Last night I wanted to kick my own self in the hind end. You know, that's a little bit physically impossible, but if I could have done it, I'd done it. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I don't understand you. But I trust you. You know, each and every one of us is going to be in a place in our life we can't explain. And there's going to be some days that we're going to say, why God? I just don't understand why. And God's probably not going to answer that. He will probably never send you an answer to why. But He'll send you the power to go through if you're in the water or you're in the fire he'll be there too I love that Shadrach, Meshach and the Bendigo story when three men went in mm -hmm. and four was walking around mm -hmm. God never put anybody in the fire unless he went himself to he will not lead his people in a place he will not go you know in the middle of the Red Sea there's that big cloud of fire in front of them it's kind of like that little boy that was scared of the dark. His daddy gave him a lantern and he said, Daddy, I can't see but three or four steps. He said, well, walk three or four steps. Mm -hmm. He walked three or four steps and he said, now I can see three or four more. He said, just keep walking as long as you can see three or four steps. And before long, that little boy got all the way where he was headed. You know, God might not show us real far in front of us. And when they was in that Red Sea, all that cloud would fire up was just, a little, just three or four steps. Just enough to see a great big wall of water over there, and a great big wall of water over there, and they could hear Pharaoh's chariots behind them. You ever heard a horse breathing hard? You can imagine the sound of what was coming behind them. And all they could see was two or three steps in front. But they could see that fire. And God says, I'm right here. Don't worry. I don't know where you are in your life. I hear stories all the time about people that says I was at a place in my life where I wanted to die and making plans on how I was going to. When somebody just picked up the phone and called and said, I love you. Out of the blue. 
or something happened and God showed me. I had a reason to go on. Just out of the blue. And you may be out there tonight listening in and you may have a problem that you can't handle. But you have to understand God's right there with you. And He's not asking you to handle it. Just to trust Him. He'll see you through. Then maybe here tonight you've got a problem you can't handle. Because I know in my life there's problems I'm not going to be able to handle. I done figured that part out. God's going to lead me down roads and I'm going to say, I don't understand this guy. This ain't fun and it ain't comfortable and this hurts like crazy and I don't want to be on this road. And God's going to say, I know. <laughs> but you just hold on. If you're on a mountain, there's a valley out in front. And if you're in a valley, there's a mountain out in front. But in the mountains there, in the valleys, there'll still be God. That's right.